Hey, yo, what up, what up, what up? This is not a podcast. It's just my thoughts with Ron Markman. Welcome back. I've been promising y'all for the last couple of days a video about Vince Staples' Dark Times. It's a new album out. This is not a review. I'm not rating it. This is not, you know, I, I spoke about this if you're, if you're new to the channel, but I spoke about this. I said, you know, I'm just not very much into kind of rating. It's just kind of what I feel, things that stood out to me really um what this Vince video is about is things that I appreciated about the album things that I appreciate about Vince you know I I listen to this album mowing the lawn like I, I don't know if it gets more regular than that I'm from Brooklyn I never I never really had grass before now I got a lawn so I was just mowing the lawn um on Friday listening to Vince and then you know I, I've been listening to it every day since just kind of sitting with it absorbing it the thing that I appreciate about this album the most, and the thing that I appreciate about Vince the most, I think, as an artist, is his self-awareness. Like, it never feels to me like Vince is trying to convince me of something. You know what I mean? Like, like he's not trying to convince me that he's a, a rapper. He's not trying to convince me that he's dope. Like, he just creates dope hip-hop music, and he's a dope rapper, like... But but I never feel like he's trying to sell me something. Um, he kind of just puts his art out there in the world. He recognizes, or at least what, or he's sure of what his place is in the world. He's sure of what his place is in the game, and he just gives you your art and his art, and you kind of appreciate it or you don't. You kind of live with it or you don't. And he doesn't seem to me, at least to me, that like he's chasing anything, and his music is a reflection of that. You know, it's funny. Somebody left a comment, and y'all know I, I I really strive to respond to as many comments as I can, at least at least the intelligent ones. Like there's some comments that is just like don't even dignify a response. But somebody has said to me, you know, the last video was about Drake and mob ties, um, leaking and and reference tracks and writers versus ghost writers, that whole thing, right? And you know, some people were people are upset at me for different reasons. Like people, Drake fans are upset because I bring it up. Um, people who don't like Drake are upset because I'm not like super condemning him into the fires of hell for having writers on the track. Like, so you can't make everybody happy. But like I said, these are just my thoughts. This is just how I feel. But somebody says something to the effect of like, yo, I hope these people really love you on your channel. But the fact is like every video that you put out with, with that's not about Drake you're only getting 3,000 views. So, you know, to try to kind of dunk on me and say, you know, unless I'm talking about Drake, I'm not getting views. And my response to that was like, so it seems. I, I didn't really even know what to say to it, but I was like, just like, so it seems. Because uh, I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't really care. I do appreciate when there's people who show up constantly and we're talking about hip hop. That's what I care about. Um, views are cool, but... Like that shit doesn't define me. I've been in this game twenty years. I've 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 done classic interviews. I've done I made classic content. I've been a part of classic shows and classic moments. Generated millions and millions of views. Generated millions and millions and millions and millions and millions and millions, and millions of dollars. Um. You know, in this industry, I, I'm I'm. It's not. That stuff doesn't drive me. But, you know, it made me think it's about this self-awareness. It, it, it was like, I mean, you know, how you going to tell me what the views are? I see it. I upload on the channel. Like, I, I, I'm i very well aware of what's performing and what's not performing. And it's cool. I'm cool with it all. I promise you. But, you know, back to Vince, um, his self-awareness is something that I appreciate. His honesty. Um, you know, I, I've interviewed Vince once or twice um, always appreciate it, but, but you got to kind of, he keeps you on your toes a bit. Cause he's not like, and I've interviewed and I've been around hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of rappers, like just about any rapper you can name that you could think of, especially in this modern era, I've been around, interviewed, collaborated with in some way. And Vince is different from, from most people that I met more or less, much less most artists. But yeah, his self awareness is something that I appreciate. Um, he did an interview with Zane Lowe on Apple Music, and you know, he, he has said something 
that's probably like taboo that you're not supposed to say, right? Like in hip hop, if you're a rapper, because we're supposed to be the best and we're supposed to sell the most and have the biggest jewelry and the flyest cars. And the, and Vince just simply told Zane, I don't have anything that's deemed to be successful in any medium. Um, you know, and, and he's talking about based off of sales, right? Or based off of ticket sales. But, you know, it depends on the goals that you set out. And he goes to explain, like, like he's not, it's not a self-deprecating thing, but he's like, you know, by the, by the measurements, by the industry's measurements of success, I don't have anything that's deemed to be successful by those metrics, right? But, you know, it depends on your goals. It depends on what you set out to do. And ultimately for him, he says success is in, in, in the execution. So his measure is different. Um, he said, you know, you got to know who you are and where you fit in. Um, he said, there's, there's a direct quote. I'm not a A tier artist. No one's coming to me for a single or a party record. Um, the people who are listening to my music are looking for thoughtfulness and creativity. At least that's what he feels. Right. But, and I'm not here to say whether he's an A list artist or not. I, you know, that like those, those things are relative. Like, yeah, if you compare him to Drake and Cole and Kendrick and, you know, Travis Scott and, and future and, yeah, he doesn't fit on that tier. Like nobody really puts Vince on on the Mount Rushmore um, in that conversation. But we're still talking about greatness. We're still talking about like a hell of an artist, a great artist who affects people. Um, and and he's just self aware of that he's not trying to sell us something that he isn't. And that's what I, I liked about this album. I just want to point out like a few things. Like like there's these just sobering moments on the album, right? Like government cheese. Verse two, really dope. Um, you know, he talks about getting a call from his partner who's locked up. And, you know, for any of us that, that have had people locked up, like, you know what it is to get that call. I've had brothers locked up, you know, cousins. I, you know, I got people locked up. But, you know, so the, the lyric is, ask how I was, said he seen me on ABC, told him I was good. I wonder if he believed. Couldn't tell him the truth. What kind of homie would I be? And knowing these 15 minutes, the only time that he's free. See? It's hard to sleep when you're the only one living the dream. Hard to leave hanging when you the money tree. Like, you know, just just that sentiment of of he's not having a good day, right? Like, you know, how, how are you? And I couldn't tell him the truth. What kind of homie would I be? These 15 minutes on the phone is the only time that he's free. Like, you know, sometimes like our people on the inside live vicariously through what we do on the day to day. So like, I like, that's just an example of what I'm talking about. That was dope. Um, shame the devil. I thought was dope. Um, you know, he had that line on there again. It's this like self awareness. I know some hoes that'll pull up to give some pussy before they come and give me a hug. Shit is disgusting. Like, and, and I'm, I'm not trying to read cause, cause Vince is very, like he said what he said. Right. So this is not to, to assign meaning to what he said, but what I kind of took from that, like, like they'll pull up to give him some pussy before they give him a hug. Like, the, the, the sex is superficial. The sex is the act. The hug more represents love. Like, like really just finding love out there. Like, it ain't nothing for him to get a, to get women. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially with the fame or, or notoriety that comes with it. But some hoes will come up and give you some pussy before they give you a hug. Is is like, just the dichotomy of that is crazy. Um... It's too fake. He says, um, the label trying to give me feedback, told me to bring the streets back. Fans said they want 2015 Vince, drop big fish, cuz been weak since. Dan, tell me how you really feel. And all I wanted was a couple mil, make the city proud, put it on for them crackers come and tear it down. What are you about? Um, you know, big fish. Like, like even that, it's like what what we hear, like feedback from the label. Like again, it's like, you know, art and business clash you know what i'm saying and, and so here's an artist saying like the label's trying to give me feedback the business side of this told me to bring the streets back man said they want 2015 vents drop big fish cuz been weak since like it is it, every like you just trying to create this thing or express yourself and it's the label in your ear it's it, it, it's the fans saying we want the old you and and just how you 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 juggle that. I thought that was an ill line. Um, the Nicki Giovanni James Baldwin interlude was dope. Like, you know, this whole concept of of if I love you, I can't lie to you. And, and she's like, nah, like lie to me. Like I, I I get the worst of you. You you lie to to the guy at your job. Like you smile in his face all day, and then I, you come home to me. I got an attitude. I thought that that skip that interlude was like. 
brilliantly placed. Um, Justin, I won't, you know, um, spoil it if you haven't heard it, but Justin has a song, just a brilliant song, a just dope storytelling. Like the song's called Justin. And you're like, what is this about? And then you find out at the end, the end is like that twist ending, you know what I'm saying? It, but it's still like relatable, like, like almost just like everyday life. So that was dope. Um, radio, I, I appreciate it the way, again, when you talk, just talk about being able to relate to do, um, the way he went from Nelly to below the heavens, you know, blue and exile, that, that classic album, you know, he said, man, I missed the radio big boy in the morning zoned in waiting for my favorite song, riding with pops in the front seat, pull up to the block with the real G's 92, three, 94, seven, the wave. I know my real ones from the ghetto relate. I know they finna play some Nelly today. My favorite rapper till I hit seventh grade and Aaron played below the heavens and everything changed. A better day was just a stone's throw away. So just this dichotomy of like what you hear on the radio, which is Nelly, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. But then again, there's this other type of art that, that you know, stone's throw, classic hip hop label that you might not hear on the, that you're definitely not going to hear on the radio. Not on commercial radio, below the heavens, blue in exile. Um, it's a classic album. If you haven't heard Below the Heavens from Blue and Exile, classic hip hop album. But it's one of those, if you know, you know. I remember I was working at Double XL at the time and we were doing the freshman cover and we put Blue on the freshman cover as a result of that album and the impact that album had. You know, it just goes to show Nelly, who was selling millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of records, the biggest pop star of, of his day, you know, when it relates to rap. And we could talk about Nelly and, and, and Blue and Exile, Nelly and Nellyville and Below the Heavens in the same breath, because it's, it's, it's all art. You know, it kind of goes back to that to that thing of even what I was talking about with the Drake thing in the last video it was like, yo, Drake is still a dope artist, even if it's not the most underground thing. He's just adhering or applying a different set of rules. Yes, I love the I love Black Thought. I love Royce the Five Nine. I think Book of Ryan is a fantastic album. Side High the Prince is one of the illest. Um, I love what a room full of mirrors is doing right now. Punch and Daylight and Itchy Bond Don. Like, like there's something about underground music that excites me. But that doesn't mean you have to be a one or or the other. Nelly, Blue and Exile, Nelly, Stone Throw. Like, it all influenced us in some way. But so yeah, I, I think that radio record is brilliant. And then I love verse two. Again, it's the storytelling, the way he transitions and starts talking about Smokey Robinson and Roberta Flack and Etta James and the appreciation of of that music versus rap music, like conveying real love. And, and, and it was all about wrapped up in his relationship with a woman who kind of put him onto that and, and made him yearn for that for that kind of music. Like, I think radio was dope. Um, Nothing Matters, again, Dope Knots, Lauryn Hill, Miseducation. It's a track on, on, on Lauren's album, on D'Angelo classic record. Um, you know, he has a dope line on there, floating like a butterfly. You got me on the ropes. I'm trying to dance with feet of clay. If cash is all these women want, then I don't want to fight no more. You you know, it's hard. I, I, it's hard for me to, um like, I feel like you heard all of the Michael Jackson metaphors, similes, just all the Michael Jackson related rhymes you can never hear until somebody comes up. With something dope. I think Kendrick and Drake were, were trading those Michael Jackson bars, and that was dope. And I was like, damn, I thought I heard all the Michael Jackson bars after I heard Kanye say, you know, got a light skinned friend just like Michael Jackson, got a dark skinned friend just like Michael Jackson. Um, similar to Muhammad Ali, right? Like we heard it all float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. But the way Vince did this, I'm like, damn, I never quite heard this before. Float like a butterfly, you got me on the ropes. I'm trying to dance with feet of clay. If cash is all these women want, Muhammad Ali float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Muhammad Ali used to be cash as clay. And I don't want to fight no more. Got me on the ropes. Like just the imagery he paints in the wordplay, super dope here. Um, Little Homies, I thought was a dope, dope record. A again, right? It this is Vince like giving game, but but it again, it's not the rapper shit. It's not like he's really trying to to put us on like. To, to convince us of something, right? They arguing about my net worth over the net. You know, they quantifying everything I ever did for the set. You know, it's a similar thing on Freeman when he's when he talks about the undisclosed amount he got from Netflix invested. The quote unquote like rapid thing to do is to say, like the way you flip that line, nah, I got five mils 
from Netflix, finessed it. You know what I'm saying? Like or something like that. Like that's just like when we get in rapper mode, a lot of times we feel like we gotta put on, we gotta assign a number to it. We gotta make the deal seem bigger than it is or brag about how big the deal was or whatever the number is, you just brag about it and there's a rap way to make it sound good. And again, I don't think Vince is trying to, to convince us of anything. It goes back to that self-awareness. Hey, I don't got to tell you the amount. Like, it's none of your business. An undisclosed amount from Netflix invested. Uh, it, it doesn't make him better or worse than anybody either, right? I'm, I'm not, because then we'll get into this comparison thing. What I'm saying is I appreciate that self-awareness. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, also, you know, the part of Freeman where he's talking about the lady who, who says she want to see me with the Grammy on stage holding no trophies. I responded as above, so below me. She said, explain. It's the power of the human brain. We tap trapped in our dreams. I understand I'm just a grain of sand and life is a beach. Only heaven knows which way I blow in the breeze. I'd be a fool to think it's all left up to me. Um, again, it's just like, yeah, the Grammy Grammys are nice, but yeah, I want to see you with a Grammy. But, you know, what does he say? As above, so below me. You know what I'm saying? Like... It's not, it's not up to him. It's not up to us. Like the success, like, again, I, it's refreshing just to hear Vince be able to put out this art and it's not about, like, it's not like for nothing. I don't feel like he's chasing nothing. I don't feel like he's trying to convince us of anything. I don't feel like he's trying to sell us anything. Like, obviously he's in the music business. Obviously he needs to make money to feed his family, his teams, to justify whatever staff, to pay the producers and and the engineers and, and, you know, people got to get paid. So it is a business. We would be naive to think that, but you know, it, it just doesn't feel like he's trying to sell us this, this grandiose image of, of what a rapper is supposed to be, you know? Um, and that's refreshing to me. I, I fuck with this album, man. That's all, that's all I got to really say about it, man. Uh, just let me know your favorite tracks, your favorite lines, your takeaways, what you appreciate from this album. But for me, it, it was just highly relatable, man. And and Vince is an artist, is somebody who I just appreciate. And I, I feel like this album is going to grow on me even more. Like it's something that I could live with. But like always, those are just my thoughts. Y'all got to let me know how y'all feel in the comments. Let's talk about it. All right. Peace.